Hello, my name is Dr. Brian Raid, and I'm a naturopathic doctor. And this is a video about testing options for um, assessing uh, for the presence of mold illness. Um, with, when it comes to testing for mold, um, there are a few different approaches that one can take. Um, one option would be to do a good old therapeutic trial and say, well, based on your history, it really sounds like mold might be something that's on the differential diagnosis list. You know, you've been exposed to you know a water damaged building or visible, you know, there's known visible mold or whatever it happens to be, and your symptoms fit that picture. Uh, you're you know chronically fatigued. You have neurological issues. Uh, possibly pain, other inflammatory symptoms, mast cell activation syndrome symptoms. Um, the, the list can go can go on from there. Uh, possibly respiratory issues, sinus issues as part of that, etc. Uh, maybe digestive issues. It could be almost any system affected by those pesky mycotoxins. Um, and so, based on the uh, history and the current symptom list, then one could do a therapeutic trial and say, well, uh, working with your healthcare provider, um, who's you know, mold literate, um, let's go on a therapeutic trial. Let's work with a therapeutic trial, see how you feel. And if you feel better, we're on the right track in all likelihood. Um, if you initially uh, feel worse, you're having a detox reaction, then of course you wanna modify the protocol, but it would suggest, you know, you're probably on the right track with the treatment that you're working with. Um, so that's certainly an option. Um, but in terms of actual, um, you know, objective lab tests or other types of assessments, there's a few different options. Uh, one option is doing something called a visual contrast sensitivity test or VCS test for short. Um, there's a couple of options available online for that. Um, one is at survivingmold.com, which is Dr. Rich Richie Shoemaker's uh, website. He's, uh, you know, the, the grandfather, if you will, of mold illness, uh, to my understanding, at least I think he was, you know, one of the, one of the ones that started it all. Um, and um, so on his website for, uh, I think it's $20 US, you can access this test. It's a simple online test that you do. Um, and, and if you, you basically look at a series of um, images and um, if you, uh, well, essentially it's these, um, uh, vertical lines and uh, you wind up doing it's about 50 images for uh, with you know one eye 50 with the other eye and um, for every uh, for every one of those 50 uh, questions that you have to answer so to speak there's um, uh, three options. So you see a circle with these hor these vertical lines and you have to click on the box saying are they slanted one way, slanted the other way, are they straight up and down, um, or there's always the option of I don't know. Um, and so you do that for you know 50 times with each eye and if you get enough of them wrong or you get certain key ones wrong then um, you will, it'll say you failed the test and that's something that can be correlated with um, mold illness. It's uh, an in indication of some type of a toxic issue affecting your central nervous system and it's not not specific for mold, um, but it is something that uh, patients with mold related issues, I've heard numbers between you know 80 to 90 percent of the time will fail this test. And you can also fail this test potentially if you're suffering from neuroborreliosis or Bartonellosis affecting the central nervous system, possibly from heavy metal related issues. I'm assuming probably from chronic uh, viral issues or viral reactivation issues affecting the central nervous system. So it's really not specific, but the way that I've kind of uh, that I uh, conceptualized it in my mind. Um, and um, the way that I explain it to my patients um, is that if you pass this test, then it makes the likelihood of mold illness quite a bit less. Um, whereas if you fail this test, then at least it suggests that mold illness is on the docket potentially, or at least something's on the docket. You shouldn't fail this test. Now, limitations of this test um, are that it's it's been used like a, a, I, I'm a big research geek and I, uh, you know, dove into the literature on this before and, and my understanding of it at least is that the <clears throat> This test, um, at least from a mold illness perspective, has been used to assess people who were suffering from being in a water damaged environment and they developed um, uh, symptoms following that. Um, and, so, and then this test, to my understanding, has also been used to assess certain um, uh, types of neurological issues like certain types of dementia, for example, there people won't do as, as well on this type of testing. And it can be a test, to my understanding, to be used to track um, how whether a person is doing better over the course of time with treatment. So, you know, it's in a water damage building. I started suffering from these crazy symptoms. Um, I'm, I'm out of the water damage building. I'm healing uh, either on my own, just time heals all wounds, or um, I may be undergoing therapy to help you know get me better, like different treatments. Um, and then I redid the test and I didn't fail it as badly, or you know I, I didn't get as many of them wrong, so to speak, for the, the little uh, for the 50. 
uh, questions for each eye. Um, so with the test, um, it, what, what the point I'm trying to get at is that um, to the extent to which it's been validated as a test for mold illness in more subtle uh, manifestations or those folks who are like mold canaries where they haven't had a major, major exposure that anyone can tell, but they're still really sick from mold exposure. You know, how, how accurate the test is at assessing that is, is a question mark, in, in my mind at least, because um, there just haven't been enough studies done on a wide range of different um, scenarios to say how, how useful it, it might be. But in my experience, um, I found it to be quite useful. Um, we've had hundreds of patients do this test. Um, we've also had patients when they've been uh, working with treatment um, then get retested down the road and I, I definitely see uh, their results improving or I've had patients who failed and then they're no are no longer failing and they're also feeling better um, I would say that in my experience is quite rare probably less than I would say two to three percent of the time give or take maybe we'll round it up to five percent for good measure um, where they failed the VCS test and then we treated them for molds anyways because let's say it was a patient I was really pretty suspicious that that's what was going on uh, we tested them they failed the VCS and then um, or they, they did the VCS and they passed it. Um, and I said, well, let's treat you anyways. Um, I'd say it's very, very rare that those people would really feel a whole lot better. Um, and then conversely, I'd say it's probably about 5% of the time that a patient would fail the VCS, we're treating them for mold and we just see no clinical change whatsoever. Um, so in other words, if, the, if you fail the test, in my experience, assuming that we've reasonably ruled out other um, causes of that, um, then, uh, such as neuroborreliosis, for example, then um, in my experience, most of the time we're gonna see at least some clinical improvement if we're treating for mold illness, suggesting to me that the test is pretty useful, like it is pretty accurate and reliable, at least in my clinical experience, for helping to pick up who's gonna respond to mold treatment and who isn't. Um, there are other tests as well, and uh, Naively, I thought I'd be able to blast through all of them in about five minutes, but it looks like I'm going to have to do another testing video um, coming up. So that's the visual contrast sensitivity test, um, arguably the uh, definitely the most accessible test, uh, the least invasive test, um, and um, and certainly a very very cost effective test. There's actually another website which I, I don't remember what it is, but it's a free version of it, and and I honestly I don't know if it's exactly the same as Dr. Shoemaker's um, test, um, but it, it is free online. Like you can donate, um, but you could not donate as well um, to, to access the test. Um, so you don't even have to necessarily drop the 20 bucks US. Um, I just feel a little bit more comfortable working with Dr. Shoemaker's uh, website and kind of supporting his work. Um, and if patients say I can't afford 20 bucks US, then I'll say, okay, let's, let's go tap into that free one. Um, so I hope that was useful and I will talk about other tests coming up very soon.